talk about head and arm. So this is one of the most underutilized positions in jiu-jitsu, and you don't have to you don't have to be good at holding it to have a good game, but everybody needs to know how to escape. Because this is also one of the main ways that wrestlers and uh, judo people will pin you. And when I travel to the different gyms, if I'm doing belt testing for, for example, to give out blue belts to some of the other gyms, one of the things that I always do is I have them run through the escapes for this position. And if they don't have a good escape for this position, then I won't give them the belt. So I really think understanding how to get out of here is really essential. So we're gonna work it a little bit. The nice thing about it is like a headlock or mount, put you in that way, it's a fixed position, meaning that uh, there's only a couple of things that we need to work and there's only a couple of a couple of things that do work. So it's limited uh, curriculum and answers that really help you. But the position is here, okay? And we're gonna talk about tightening this up in a minute. I don't wanna put any pressure on his neck, so I'm never gonna pull up on his neck, but I am gonna give him a little bit of weight. Okay, and this is head and arm. So most of the time in jiu-jitsu, we'll use this underhook sit up because this is much harder for the person to take your back. It is generally considered a safer position, but this is actually probably more common. And um, you can put a lot of pressure on people from here. You can make it very difficult for people to breathe from here. Um, but we're gonna start here real quick. So I just want you, I'm not gonna give you any other instruction other than don't pull up on their head but I want one side to hold this position for just a short period of time and one side to try and escape. And then I'll tell you when to switch and then we're gonna work pressure and then we're gonna work how to escape out of here. I think we'll be able to figure out how to escape before class is over. Some of you are starting to, just from holding this for a minute, you can kind of feel some basic objectives. Like for example, you realize if you pull up on this arm then it makes it hard for the person to turn towards you and take your back. Right? This arm is what's keeping him from taking my back. Without the arm he'd be potentially attacking you. And we'll talk a little bit more about putting pressure here, but let's just talk about some simple things I don't want you to do on the bottom. So the most common thing that people tend to do from here is they'll push on your face, and you want it both hands, they'll make frames, and then they'll throw their legs on. That, that is a jiu-jitsu escape, but it's not one I teach. And the reason is really simple. Go to do it to me. If I just duck my head, then it's impossible. <clears throat> And the problem is the moment he lets go of his hands, right? So his hands are free. Now I've got basically three limbs, both my legs and my hand against one arm. And it's very hard for him to stop me from submitting him here. I can just adjust my legs so I can move this down just to the fulcrum of the elbow. Put this, sorry, put that for, you okay? Move that real slow, but an Americana, if I fed that under my leg. But here, fight a little bit from here, Daddy, right? I think it's very difficult for him to battle, even if they're strong and I can use my foot here. So you do not want to let me get a hold of this arm or let them get a hold of this arm. So this needs to stay protected. Okay. And then, like I said, try and push my face and escape. All I need to do to, to shut that down is drop my head. So that's not what we want to rely on. So that's number one. I'm going to keep my head low and close to the same side as my body. It also makes it harder for him to roll, not over here. Second is, I don't wanna to have to use this hand to hold the elbow. So the deeper I get in his armpit, the less, the more this is free. And I can just grab my own thigh, inner thigh here. And now it's very difficult trying to get your elbow to the mat. Very difficult for him to get the elbow to the mat. So again, my arms are free. But, do I have much weight on him now? All my weight's on the mat, so that right away tells you it's a mistake, okay? So when I'm holding head and arm, it's here, right? And you guys can't feel a big difference, but Dowdy can feel a big difference, right? That's the pressure. What's that? Your butt's off the ground. All the entire time. So I want my butt off the ground, and I want my hip kind of up against his rib cage. <clears throat> this is here, right? Move around a little bit. And we can make this worse by moving more of my weight onto the scale. So as soon as my weight comes off the mat, it's on him, but there's still a lot of it over here. Now I go here. Now you can feel the difference, right? Very difficult. Most people will wind up tapping after a couple seconds of hanging out here like that, yeah. okay? So here's what I want you guys to do when you take the position, all right? 
As you sit out, you're pulling up on the arm, and I want you to get your hip as deep into that armpit as possible. So you're way up here. Hand grabs, and then I sit, but my butt is off the mat, okay? And my hip is up against his ribs. My head's down, if he goes to push on my head, I'm here, and I would immediately start to attack his arms, okay? So what I want you to do is grab your own hand. Good. If he connects his hand, I really only have, I can punch him, okay, in here, but I really only have one submission, which is kind of a Kimura that involves me getting up underneath his elbow, which he can defend. If he doesn't grab his own hand, I've got all kinds of submissions, arm triangles, breaks, Americanas, all kinds of things, and I have a lot of leverage, and he has none. So connect your hands together, keep this elbow down, good, and then I just want to practice feeling my weight here. And your partner can tell you whether or not it's worse, right? And then, as you guys start to get a little more advanced at this, it's gonna it's gonna be like this. <clears throat> now I'm up, now I'm almost. It's like a, if you had a 40 pound weight shaped like a cylinder, and then we have it here, and the scales right here, and then I slide it more this way, then it's a lot more weight. So you begin by keeping your butt off the mat. And then as you start to get more comfortable there, feeling like you can keep the person pinned, you move your hip higher and higher until ultimately you're sitting right on the side of their ribs. And then this becomes a horrendous position for the person on bottom. Okay? Yeah. On bottom now, connect your hands. So you're not, you don't want your hands free there. So you're initially gonna sit out, there's different ways we can get into it. But for now, I'm initially gonna sit out into it. I'm just gonna grab his head. And as I grab his head, I hit the switch high up into the armpit and I sit back. Okay, so this is one. But my hips never touch the mat. And you can see how wide my legs are and that this knee is up. This one's pointed more this way, it makes it harder for the bridge. My head and my weight are still here. If he pushes on my head, I'll just go here, okay? Once I start to feel kind of comfortable with that, I'm gonna post and then I, then I adjust. And now I sit a little bit higher. Post, and I adjust, now I'm here. And once I get here, I'm just going to And if I want to put more pressure on them, I can do that same rolling pin pressure that I showed you guys earlier from the right. Okay, so you start by sitting out deep in the armpit, and then you adjust. Get your hip a little higher, and then adjust. And at first, you might go a little bit far this way. You'll know, because then I'll roll you. But most of you can be much higher on the ribs than you think. And you guys can feel how much more that sucks when you're on bottom, right? Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell for frequent updates because we're updating this every week. And make sure you comment and like and share our videos. We appreciate it and we definitely try and respond to all the comments. And if you like what we're doing and you like the material, check out SPG University, SPGU, uh, and you're going to see a ton more uh, in, in much greater depth than what you see here on YouTube. Thank you very much.